Welcome to this GMDE screencast. And today we're going to continue with the geologic map that we geo-referenced uh, in one of the previous screencasts and look to see how to extract basic geologic information from a standard topo map. Now, this geologic map has already been geo-referenced and you can tell that because it's reading the coordinates and the longitude and latitude of the cursor in the lower left corner. And these long numbers here with the zone number and so on are the UTM coordinates. Because the units of this map are set in feet, uh, we're actually seeing UTM coordinates translated into feet as well. Now, the other thing that we've done here is that we have read in a digital elevation model, which gives us immediate access to all of the elevations under the cursor, as you can see right here, this number right here. Uh, and the program also shows you the boundary of the DEM, uh, so we know when we're outside of the DEM or inside of the DEM. Now, one of the simplest things you might want to do for a geologic map like this uh, is to get a point elevation someplace. And you do that in GMDE by holding down the Option key on the Mac or the Alt key in Windows and clicking on uh, the point that you're interested in, in this case, the 7,600 foot contour. When I do that, this dialog box pops up and it tells us that underneath the cursor it was 7,605 feet. So one of the simplest things you might like to do is to simply digitize some strikes and dips. And you can see some strike and dip symbols here. So let's do that. Let's actually capture those uh, strike and dip symbols, starting with this one up here. Because we're digitizing strike and dip, we're going to use user entered strike and dip uh, rather than using a three point problem. Now you can turn that on by clicking this box here or you can turn that on by going to the operations menu and choose drag strike line or command D, and that turns that on automatically. To actually set the strike and dip, we need to first uh, say that the next click will be on the strike symbol. And we do that one of several ways. Uh, the simplest way is to click this symbol here or this button here, and then we come here we position the cursor right at the intersection between the dip tick mark and the strike line, and then we drag the strike line uh, until it matches that on the map. Now you can see the dip is in the opposite direction. That's because I'm dragging to the southeast, and um, GMDE automatically uses a right-hand rule convention. So I can reverse that around so it's going in the right direction like that. Now, the other thing you notice as I drag, the number uh, gets larger. That is the dip number, and it uh, gives us a way of setting the uh, dip automatically without having to type it in. Once I release the mouse, uh, you can see that that dip number has been entered into the dip box here, and the strike is automatically in here as well. The other thing you see is that the coordinates have been captured. These are the coordinates uh, for that point. If we like that point and it looks like what we want, uh, we can set the, the type of observation. It's a bedding observation, so we'll set bedding. The method was manual, so we'll leave that as is. And when I click record, the year, uh, month and day and time will all be filled in uh, for you. And you see here is that strike and dip. Now, it can get tedious to click and then drag, click and drag, and so on. So GMDE offers a faster way of collecting a lot of strike and dips. Let me scroll this a little bit to get a few more on the map. We can go up to the operations menu and we hold down the Option key or the Alt key. And when we pull down this time, it doesn't say drag strike and drips, it says drag many strike and dip lines. What this allows us to do is that each click in the map will automatically be a strike and a dip line. So we can drag here like that. 
And I actually find it faster rather than adjusting the strike line to type in the values. When I let this go, the dip column is at, selected here, so I could uh, type it in automatically. Now I can just keep dragging. And you get the idea. I can just keep clicking and dragging on the different symbols until I'm done. And when I'm done, I clicked the Finish button. And they've all been entered in here. That is one way to uh, enter strikes and dips. But the other way to enter strike and dip is to do a three-point problem. Uh, and to do that, we're going to untoggle or toggle off this button here. And now what we need to do is enter three points along the contact, say this contact right in here. The slow way to do this is the following. I will click at this point here and then click that point there. Then I will click this button and click down here someplace and click that button and click up here someplace. And uh, it's automatically calculated the strike and the dip from the three point uh, problem here. It's put the strike symbol by default on the first point clicked. But let's say I want it on the second point. Well, I can do that simply by clicking that radio button and it will move it to the second point there. The other thing you'll notice is that some plus or minuses have uncertainties have shown up here. Where did those come from? The uncertainties are specified in this panel here in the set errors uh, group box here. And you can see that I previously set 32.8 for the horizontal and the vertical positional uncertainties. And those are propagated into the strike and dip error calculation. Now you might say that's a strange number, 32.8. What it really is, the default uh, errors for the program are 10 meters and 32.8 feet is 10 meters. So if I want to calculate a thickness, say between the base of this JS unit, the Jurassic Stump Formation, and the top, I need to enter a fourth point anywhere along this contact here. And I can do that in this panel right here by clicking the button and then coming over here and just clicking anywhere on the contact. It doesn't have to be in a down dip position. And you can see that the program has calculated a map thickness of 404 feet. If I like this observation, and the uh, thickness, I click record, and it has entered all of those values into the table down here in the bottom.